Greetings, retro lover. Ethan here, aka the Ghost Mall, teaching you everything I know about writing and producing retro inspired music. And in this video, you are going to learn three ways to create more variety and interest if you're working on a song composed entirely of one simple repetitive chord progression. This is the second video in my studio vlog series where I use songs I'm working on and issues I'm encountering personally in my studio as examples to help you learn new tips, tricks, and techniques to improve your own retro music. So let's go ahead and jump in so that the next time you are faced with a very repetitive tune, with only three or four chords in it, you will have at least a few tools at hand to help spice things up a bit. So the session I pulled up to work with today is a sort of cyberpunk slash synthwave remix I recently completed of an awesome tune called Blood Pressure Eyes by the band Remote Tree Children. I had a ton of fun working on this one, partly because Remote Tree Children is a side project of one of my longtime songwriting inspirations, Glenn Phillips, who is also the lead singer in the band Toad the Wet Sprocket. When I was a teenager, they were my favorite band, maybe tied with The Cure, but definitely top tier. So getting to work with Glenn's vocals and give them my own spin was kind of a dream come true. If you're interested in hearing this remix in full, I'll be sure to put a link into the description of this video. But let's talk about the issue that I encountered regarding harmony and chord progressions with this remix. Now, usually when I do a remix, I like to completely reharmonize the song I'm remixing from the ground up. While my habit is to typically keep things in the same key and at the same tempo as the original, I usually prefer to avoid listening to the original as much as I can and use the remix as an opportunity to practice reharmonization and to sort of dive head first into my nerdy love for cool and vibey jazz chords and to make things as unique and interesting as possible through the use of cool chords and progressions. In this case, however, I decided to go in a different direction. Instead of completely reharmonizing the tune and coming up with new chord progressions, I decided to focus more on instrumentation and sound design to create that particular vibe I was going for. I left the original chord progression as the backbone, and that would have been less of an issue in a song that had two or three distinct progressions. For example, one for the verse, one for the chorus, one for the bridge, etc. However, this song, the original that is, happens to use a single four chord progression pretty much from the beginning to the end. Specifically, it is in the key of A minor, and it goes A minor, C major, F major. D minor. Pretty conventional kind of uh, chord progression. Now, in my opinion, the original song still succeeds in maintaining the listener's interest, despite the repetitive chord progression, mostly for two reasons. One, the variety and cool elements in the melody and the lyrics, and two, the variety and cool elements in the instrumentation and the sonics. And since it was my plan to focus mostly on the latter in my own remixed arrangement, that is, trying to capture a particular vibe through the instrumentation and the sound of the instruments, I decided to take on the challenge that the original song left me in terms of using just this four chord progression throughout. But before giving you three specific tactics that I used, and that you can also use, to create a greater sense of variety within a simple progression, let me play you back just the first verse and chorus of this remix so you can get a sense for the song and for the chord progression itself. All right, so here goes. I know I'm the shit cause you're with me. You make the world spin faster. You give it gravity. Yeah, I know what 
Okay, so hopefully that gives you a good sense for the tune itself as I've remixed it, the sort of vibe I was going for, and uh, the instrumentation. But let's specifically go ahead and hone in on the instruments that outline the chords per se. So actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to mute uh, all the vocals and the drums and the percussion. So the vocals here are in gold, the drums and percussion and some other like uh, sound effect uh, elements are in red. And I'm also going to mute what I call the ear candy parts in purple here. Those are elements which are just in the arrangement for interest and sort of to provide the seasoning, so to speak, for the arrangement. That will leave us with just the bass here in blue and these two synths in green, which comp out variations on the chords. Okay, so if you've watched any of my previous retro wave production breakdowns, you might already be familiar, but that's my color scheme that I use throughout all of my work just to keep things consistent. So we've got blue for the bass and these two synths in green comp out the chords. And all of these sounds, by the way, these synth sounds, these three here at, at least, and some others in the tune, they happen to be coming from the excellent Silent One synth plugin from Leonard Digital. And even more specifically, all of these presets came from a sound bank called Cinematic 80s. I believe it's from Sennheiser. And in any case, I'll be sure to put links to both Silent and the presets in the description of this video in case you'd like to check them out for yourself. But uh, I like limitations and I like to set limitations for myself before beginning a production. And one of the ones I set for myself in this case was to use just a small number of synths and Silent One was the primary one. Okay, so now in the arrangement, I've used a tried and true method for building energy throughout the tune from the beginning to the end, namely breaking down to the bass and the rhythmic elements in the verses. So here we are in, this is the middle of the first verse. And then adding back in one or more instruments, comping out the chords in the choruses. Here's the middle of the chorus. That's this bit right here. Okay, so in this case, it is these two synth parts in green I've already mentioned, which go ahead and play out the chords. Now, I could easily have fallen into the trap of just having these instruments play the same four chords with the same extensions in the same voicings in the same rhythmic pattern over and over. but that is exactly the pitfall that this video wants to address for you. That kind of arrangement choice simply reinforces the feeling of repetition and makes it even more obvious and frankly, sometimes more annoying for the listener. So instead, what I've done here is to vary a few variables. Let's go ahead and pick uh, this first one. I'll open up the piano roll. I uh, varied a few variables, which I actually just already hinted at, every bar or two to keep things interesting and spicy, so to speak, for the listener, even though the same four chords essentially continue throughout the entire song. So what are those three variables specifically? They are first, chord complexity, second, chord voicing, and third, chord rhythm. All right, so what do I mean by those? Well, chord complexity really means how many additions does this chord have? How varied and complex and subtle are the notes combined in this chord? So you might have just a basic triad, like a, a minor chord or a C major triad, or even just a, a root and a fifth, which is called a power chord, and I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that in a second, all the way up to a more complex chord with additions like sevenths and ninths and elevenths and thirteenths. And if you've been following my channel for a while, you probably have already seen some of my most popular videos are in my Retro Chords series, where I talk specifically about chord extensions and how to bring that kind of vibiness and sort of using jazz voicings in your music. So it's, I'm big on that. And uh, that is one way you can create variety in a simple four chord progression is by varying the complexity, moving from simple versions to versions with additions, etc. Then there's the chord voicing. That has to do with, uh, is the chord in its root position or an inversion? Is it a tight voicing or a big open voicing? That can really change the, the feel of the chord, and you can vary that throughout. And finally, rhythm, of course. If you had the same comping or rhythmic, you know, strumming or comping pattern, depending on the instrument, from the beginning to the end of the song, that would be very, very repetitive and probably pretty irritating to the listener. But to the extent that you can just change up rhythmic patterns, that can also provide a lot of variety and interest for the listener. So let me show you specifically how I employed a combination of all three of these 
varying chord complexity, varying chord voicing, and varying chord rhythms in the chorus section of this song, which is actually kind of long for a chorus. It's 16 bars, which makes the need for a greater sense of variety even more important. So let's go ahead and look at the first synth part here. That's this one here. I'll solo up just the bass and that synth. You can see that at first here in this bar here, 19, for the first four bars, I use these rather open two note voicings in the right hand. They're not very complex. And also, as I just mentioned, they are characterized by an open feeling. They're actually, uh, this is based on a power chord, root and fifth. And also the rhythm is extremely simple. But then later on in the chorus, I add more complex versions of the chords. And actually, let me go ahead and open up my keyboard here so you can take a look at what these are. And I'll break it down in more detail with my, with my keyboard on screen. Okay, so you should be seeing my keyboard as well as my DAW on screen now. Let me just play you back this section of the chorus with just the bass and the first of these two synths in green, and you can hear what they sound like. There's the bass underneath. So the notes in green here on the piano roll are this first synth. Alright, so what's happening here? How am I using those three variables to my advantage in this chorus? Well, first of all, the first section is just this. It's an A and an E note, a fifth apart. Then down to this, a fourth, and then back again. The second time I start adding in the roots. So I'm already providing a little bit of variation there, but uh, in terms of the complexity of the voicing, it starts with just an A power chord. That means it doesn't have a third. It could be minor, it could be major. We don't know, it's ambiguous. It has that sort of open feeling. Now, when I continue to play that form in the right hand, but change the root, the chord being played changes. So this is an A power chord. But with the C underneath, basically what that is is that's a voicing of a C major 7th chord. Then with the F underneath, an F major 7th chord. And then up here I go to the D note to this 4th. That is a D power chord, just inverted. So uh, this 4 note, or excuse me, 4 chord sequence begins and ends on a power chord, sort of open voicing, not complex at all, open feeling to the voicing, but the rhythm's very simple, just quarter notes. So again, the first half of the chorus is like this. All right, so then what do I vary from here in the second half of the chorus? Well, first it's complexity. It moves on to this. Right here, bar 27 is what we're talking about. And I have now created much more complex chords with further extensions on top of the same roots, the A minor, C major, F major, D minor, four chord progression we're dealing with. It becomes... So this chord is a voicing that I've talked about in previous videos that I really like. This is like a um, a minor ninth. It's an add nine chord. So if I stack it up, instead of having it in that tight inversion, what you're going to get is... So that's the actual set of notes, but we're playing it in this tight inversion. It's a more complex chord, more ambiguous. It's a ninth chord. Root changes to the C. That's now a, a version of a C major 7 inverted. Then 
F major 7 to D minor 7. And you'll notice that I'm just, in terms of voice leading, moving one or two notes at a time here. And then for the end of the chorus, we go back to the more open thing from the beginning. So as you can see, in this sequence in the chorus, we've varied the complexity of the chords, we've varied the voicings of the chords, and we haven't varied the rhythm yet, though. We're just sort of hammering out these quarter notes. And to illustrate the third element, varying the rhythm, let's hop over to this other synth, and I'll solo it up with the bass. This is a sort of 80s synth brass. Let's play that with the bass, and you'll be able to hear how it's a little bit different from the other part. So this part at the beginning is identical to the other synth, but this part is not. All right, so what's happening there, and how does it have to do with varying rhythm? Well, from bar 19 through bar 26, the parts are identical. They're still the sort of open based on the, the fifth, the A and the E, uh, and the fourth, perfect fourth. If I let you see both synth parts on top of each other, you'll notice at the beginning they're really the same. But halfway through the chorus in bar 27, the second synth plays a different pattern like this. Sort of slowed that down so you can see, but it's not the same pattern that's being played by the first synth, the sort of straight quarter notes. And then in the last four bars, it's a, an even more sparse, but it's still a syncopation, it's still a variation that differs from the other synth to sort of offset the rhythm. So let's just hear those two synths together without the bass at the end of the chorus, and you'll see how I vary the rhythm by having the two parts play different rhythms that play off of one another. So hopefully taking a look at these two synth parts, comping out the chords in the chorus of this remix, gives you a sense for how you can use those three variables to provide a greater variety, even though the substrate upon which this is happening is the same four chords over and over again, ad nauseum. We've changed up the chord complexity by adding extensions and taking them away to create more tension, more uh, ambiguity, and less, and going back and forth. We've changed the voicings to create more open spaces or tighter spaces, simple sort of fifth kinds of voicings down to some really tight ones. We've also varied the rhythm from just straight ahead sort of quarter note comping out to some more syncopations. And those three elements can really help you to create more variety, even if you just have a simple chord progression throughout your song. All right, my friend, I hope that this video has given you a few new ideas that you can use to help spice up a song that otherwise is confined to that repetitive three or four chord progression throughout. Obviously, altering one or more sections of the song by reharmonizing them with new distinct chord progressions would be ideal when trying to create more variety, but sometimes that is just not the option that we want to employ, or it's not an option that we even can employ. So Finding other ways to add variety to the chord progression you're already working with can be important, and hopefully these three methods work out for you in the future. If you have other techniques that you'd like to share that can help increase harmonic variety and interest in a song, please feel free to leave them in the comments section of this video, and we can all learn from one another. 
Otherwise, thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video or found it informative, please feel free to leave a like, and that way you'll be able to find it again later in your liked videos. If you know anybody who might benefit from this lesson, please feel free to share the video with them. And finally, if you'd like to see more videos like this about producing retro wave and other retro inspired genres of music, please feel free to subscribe to The Ghost Mall here on YouTube. Thanks again for watching, Retro Friend, and until next time, take it easy, keep it retro, and be well.